All right. Now we're going to move to a four port. So I left the three port up to start with so that we could understand where we're coming from and where we're going. The way that a four port works is a little differently internally. And so I'm going to do some erasing here. Just bear with me. I'm going to remove that output. I'm going to remove that vent and this source. And I'm going to take the reference line off and the source line. The reason I just erased all that is because, as the name implies, a four port has got four ports on it. The way that this is plumbed is a little different. If you come out of the turbo and go into the bottom port, well, I don't want to say bottom port. You go into one of the inlets on the, uh, the four port, then your reference and your dome go to the two other ports on the opposite side. And the way this works is internally these are switching. So as the as the pintle moves um, at zero percent duty cycle, you get full reference and no boost. I'm gonna go ahead and delete these numbers here. Excuse me, I said that wrong. At zero percent. you're going to get full reference and zero dome pressure. That's going to be effectively wastegate pressure, right? You're going to run whatever it runs on gate. Let's say it's 10 pounds. I love 10 pounds. It makes the math easy. If you run 10 pounds on gate, as you command more duty cycle, let's skip this to 50%. What we're effectively doing is bleeding off reference pressure to atmosphere while simultaneously adding pressure to the dome. So what this means is instead of at 50% we're going to put 10 pounds of pressure and another 5 on the dome, it means that we're going to do the we're going to invert them. We're going to take away reference pressure and put a bunch on the top. Now this is flirting partially with disaster. If you remember back to wastegate only into the reference bypass, when we take pressure away from the reference side, now the only thing that's trying to open our, our wastegate is back pressure. That's dangerous in the sense that you can let it um, not be controlling boost based on your um, actual boost in the manifold, but rather work on back pressure, and that's not always consistent with what boost is going to be in the manifold. That said, when you're trying to pin the wastegate shut, you're intentionally, as long as this functions correctly, you're intentionally trying to hold this thing closed, right? You're adding uh, force to the top of, of the dome, helping the spring hold it down. So it's the quickest way that you can do a little bit of plumbing and be able to get huge boost swings. That's the, that's the real desire of going to a four port. If you need to leave the, the starting line at two and a half pounds of boost because your awesome big block with massive turbos and your lightweight car makes way too much power um, in A, then you can leave on a very small amount of boost and instantly ramp that up to a very large amount of boost using a four port. Uh, it literally inverts your pressures from the reference side to the dome side. A hundred percent duty cycle on a four port, let's make this clear, is completely shutting the reference off and adding all of the boost that's coming out of the turbo to the dome plus your spring. AKA it holds the wastegate shut and all you get is all the turbo out. Um, these things are incredibly difficult to set up because they're so unbelievably sensitive. You're going to end up finding out that like 
30% duty cycle means you make all the boosts and 25% duty cycle means you make half the boost. So you need to go in really small increments, learn the way that your four port's gonna act. Um, again, when you start dealing with back pressure being the thing that's opening your gate, you gotta be really careful with that. Um, it's a little unpredictable uh, when, you, when you start doing that and you really need to size your spring uh, really small, really small, like pound or two pound spring, um, just because so much of the control is now in the hands of the boost controller. Um, things to do with Holly, uh, and really honestly, and not even just Holly, this, this goes to your, to your boost controller, your standalone boost controllers as well. Um, you got. I alluded to the fact that you got to find where your that, that range that you're going to live in. If you are going to use closed loop control, then you need to be really careful with your PID settings and spend a lot of time really dialing those settings in so that this thing will do exactly what you want it to do. Um, the thing you have to remember is when you're running PID off of a dome sensor, uh, the dome the dome's great. Um, it works well, it's just there's not a sensor in the reference side. The, the dome side somewhat assumes that the boost pressure is going to be on the reference side. When you start using a four port, that's the reason you live in such small uh, duty cycle ranges. You're losing reference, but the dome doesn't know that. Um, we'll cover a little bit more of this in the closed loop, open loop discussion and how you can use it and what is PID, all that stuff. Um, but for now, I think that's a really good place to leave four port. Um, what, what's the crazy, what's the Spider-Man movie quote? Great power comes great responsibility. That's great power. You gotta be really careful with those. They work really awesome whenever you need to make a little bit of boost and a lot of boost very near the same time. So that's four port. Let's cross it off the list.